everyone welcome back to another episode of green life garden and home diy channel it's your girl ro aka mommy green life coming to you today with preservation for flower now flower is one of those things it's kind of controversial on how you should go about canning it so i always tell people do your research do what works best for you and use what you have if necessary um what i am going to be using are mylar bags now you'll have some people that say uh, you know, just go ahead and use your vacuum vacuum sealer uh, for it or uh, put it in containers or, you know, just put it in a big food grade five gallon bucket and seal it off with a gamma lid, whatever. This is what I'm doing. And the reason I'm going about it this way is because uh, I'm trying to keep it pretty long term. I don't use a whole bunch of flour, but when you're putting things away, uh for food preservation you know we're on a whole nother level it's not about what you like and your favorite things to eat out of the store now it's about survival time okay so this is 25 pounds of uh bleached enriched flour um you know flour meal beans all of these things are prone to weevils and different things of that nature if kept over um an extended period of time not stored properly some people will freeze their flour grains and, and 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 beans but i choose not to do that and the reason being is because these are going to be going in airtight um bags and, and i'm going to be putting oxygen absorbers in there as well that's going to suck the life out of hopefully whatever may be in there you know um no one wants to run the risk of being in a situation where you can't get food and you have food that you you can't eat because you know the we, the weevils have taken it over or what have you so i'm going to go ahead and show you guys how i go about this now you can use your vacuum sealer and a lot of people do and once they use the vacuum sealer you know that's putting it inside of the the plastic type bags and, and they then they put it in the mylar bag just double protection flour is not one of those things that you um really i guess want to store more than a year or so um so you will have to have what you call a working pantry or just make sure that you're rotating everything um you know as you use use that that is the oldest and so on and so forth so um i believe that's pretty much it uh, um the enemy of flour and, and rice and anything that you're storing long term is going to be moisture especially if it's a dry food um you have to know how to put these things away to keep the rodents from getting a hold to it um yes rats can eat through these mylar bags they can eat through five gallon buckets and a whole bunch of other things but to keep down pests then you need to make sure you're putting your things up off the floor in a place that is safe um just in case you know it was a, it's, you live in a flood zone uh, you just have to take a lot of things into consideration on how you're going to store up. So, you know, when you come back for it, whenever, um, you, you don't have problems. Okay. So, uh, the main thing is, is just, just get started. Just get started. Put you a little bit away here and there. And, um, and that's, that's about it. Uh, as far as flour, um, you know, this is a temporary like i said not looking to hold over a year for me i prefer wheat berries which is i could grind to make my own flour and when i get mine in i'll be showing you guys how to go about doing that as well and that way you don't have to worry about um you know something that has already been processed okay Okay, so I went ahead and cut a hole straight across the top of my bag. The only thing I'm going to do now is start dipping my flour out and pouring it into this measuring cup just to know exactly how much flour I have in the bag. Then I'm going to seal it up. You could use gloves if you want, but make sure your hands are clean and dry most of all. Alright, so we know flour can get kind of messy. I won't be as careful as I can. And, uh, okay, so my first four cups of flour are, is about to go into the bag. 
Okay, so inside this jar I have oxygen absorbers and uh, it's recommended that for a gallon size bag like this one, uh, this one is holding actually about 16 cups of flour. I'm going to add three. These are 100 cc's. You could always go to um, websites to see exactly what type of oxygen absorber you need to store whatever it is you're trying to put away. Of course, this is flour for me. These are 100 cc packets. It takes about 300 cc, so I'm going to put three in there. And you have to be quick about using these oxygen absorbers because, of course, they are constantly pulling air um, from the atmosphere. So when I'm not using them, I put them in this mason jar. And you can also vacuum seal them back up. So I'm going to go ahead and get three and put it inside the bag. Some people don't. Uh, put oxygen absorbers in um, That's your personal preference and uh, They would use bay leaves to um, Also use bay leaves to keep down the bug infestation, but as far as absorbing moisture and what have you uh, It's important that you use the absorber so try to get as much air out of the bag as you can i'm also going to show you another way too if you just do not have um mylar bags and things of that nature so you don't feel like you can't do anything right now so what i'm going to do right now is go ahead and show you how i seal the bag okay so to seal the bag i'm using a flat iron that i have um i'm sure some of you ladies have one or you could probably find one i mean they are plentiful i have lots of them because I did hair 30 years and we just collect stuff <laughs> okay so let me go ahead and show you how to do this you just grab the bag here I try to grab it on the sides so it'll flatten out and I take and I add my heat to it right here and it's going to seal it they do have iron specifically for this but uh i'm just not one to run out and buy every little thing that's offered when you can make do with what you ha with what you have and as long as this is sealed properly those absorbers on the inside they're going to continue to pull whatever oxygen is left in there out and this bag will actually start to um shrivel up or shall I say tighten up all right the only thing you do to check it is just turn your bag upside down to make sure nothing is coming out and I'm going to show you another way to go about it too okay we got that all done of course you would see flour coming out if that was not sealed so that's nice and tight all I'm going to do now is I'm going to put flour, what kind of flour, or the name brand, and a date on the outside of my bag. Okay, so I've got that on there. Today is the 13th. And the only thing I'm going to do is when I get this flour used up, I'm going to take the label off and I'm going to attach it to one of my bags or I'm going to put it inside of the, the bucket with the inventory that I have. Okay, get ready to seal my second bag. Just make sure you fish these out whenever you get ready to use your flour. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to show you is how to use your vacuum seal to um, save your flour. And some people say that this doesn't work as good as the Mylar bags because of the plastic. You know, it could be compromised if it's not a certain thickness and just so on and so forth. Again, do your own research. Do what works best for you. But what I'm going to be using is this paper bag to put the flour in. Um, if it was in its own packaging, I would probably just leave it. But the um, paper bag is going to serve as a purpose of not allowing the, the fine flour dust to go up into the vacuum hose and clog it up. So I'm going to use that and then I'm going to put it inside of my um, food saver package here. And I'm going to show you how that's done. Just want to show you right quick. You could do this by cups, which is I have about four cups and eight cups in this bag right now. 
or you can do it by weight and that eight cups is averaging right at about uh, almost three pounds so you decide because again you never know when you may need to barter with your goods and trade out for something somebody else may have that you need and having it in smaller portions would allow you to do that so if that's something you're thinking about doing then you may want to go ahead and uh, measure out a certain amount to do something like that or if you have certain recipes or what have you which i encourage you to put over into your container with your uh goods that you're saving and um you'll have everything right there you know uh, eight cups of flour is not something i generally we use all at once but again just do whatever works best for you all right so i went ahead and i put five pounds in here i've got it all packed down in there good so the next thing i'm going to do is just gently fold that over i'm going to use some masking tape just to tape it right here because i still want that uh oxygen to come out of the bag and this would allow me to also write on it and um, put the date, what it is, or write on the bag, or what have you, okay? These storage bags come on a roll. All you need to do is cut it to about the size that you need. And uh, you see, I went ahead and got the information there, and I got the uh, brand, too, because, you know, you want to make sure if you have an issue in the future when you open it you know where it came from you know what kind it is you know whether to keep getting that or get something else so i'm going to cut this and i'm going to seal one end and then i'll come back and vacuum seal the other end okay, okay so i'm cutting the size that i need notice i didn't put any oxygen absorbers in there because this is going to suck all the air out i mean you can if you want to but uh that's not what i'm doing here so Okay, I'm going to go ahead and seal this by pressing down however your machine works. That's what you do. And I'm going to hit seal. And it's just going to seal the end of the bag so that I'll be able to put something in it and it not fall out on the other side. You know, nothing is foolproof. I mean, you do what you can, all right? So, uh, that's done. I'm going to go ahead and take that out. I'm sorry, I'm trying to work with one hand to show you what I'm doing. All right, so that end of the bag is sealed. You can see that. All right, now I'm ready to go ahead and put my bag of flour in here. And leave yourself some room because you can reuse these. And you could also reuse your Mylar bags. And when I say leave yourself some room, that means to open the bag, you're going to have to cut it. And then when you use whatever you're going to use, you can seal it back up. Okay. Okay. So I went back and I reduced uh, the amount of flour because the way these bags are pre-cut, um, I had to cut it in such a way that the, the, the width of this bag would be able to fit in there and I tried turning it sideways as well and it just it was just a little bit too much for it so all right so what we're going to do now is go ahead and get this sealed up okay so I've got my bag inside I'm going to go ahead now instead of hitting the back only with, I'm at the um, seal button this time we're going to go ahead and hit food Taking it a minute because I left quite a bit up there because I cut it for the larger bag. So taking a bit to get the air out. Okay, so set that there. Open it. Alright, there you have it, still as a brick, 
Okay, so we pulled all the air out of that bag. And um, again, that would not have been the amount that I left. That was a real excessive. But because of I had already cut it, I just went ahead and used it. And I could have cut it again and sealed it and did something else. But anyway, that's it, y'all. So I hope that if you learned something today, go ahead and give it a shot. Use what you have. Uh, just remember to go ahead and start putting away some things. Don't get caught up in all the different uh, ways that people do things. Everybody have their way of doing things. So um, just give it a shot. Go look at the, uh, the experts and uh, check out the, um, the recommendations, you know, online on different websites for uh, storing food long term. And uh, you'll find all the information you need. All right. Thanks for watching. One love. Right quick, I just wanted to say, make sure I got ready to take the label off to put with my uh, flower storage. Make sure that you are checking your dates. I bought this this month, which is January 2020, uh, 21. And look, 6-2-20, I didn't see that. I've already got everything all packaged up, but it tells you clearly the shelf life would be one year from this date so you know uh but notice on here my coconut flower expires on uh, 2022 and uh your gold metal flower all purpose it expires 2022 don't know if you can really see that but that's the best uh use date so make sure that you are checking your dates